BP was interested in the urban energy projects as part of BP's greater commitment to understanding the sustainability of, of energy use in a world where we're also concerned about climate change. It's a very important challenge to get right. Energy is going to be primarily used in cities in the future, and cities will be at the forefront of the battle against climate change. Cities cover many different aspects of energy use. We have all the issues of heating and cooling buildings, which is a big factor in the energy system. We also have big energy use in transporting people, moving them around. And increasingly, we have big energy use in our information systems, just the power needed to run our computers. Not only do you need to understand technologies of today and technologies of the future, like the buildings and the transport system and the energy system, but how people are likely to behave in the future and what kind of services they're going to want so that you can understand how best to deliver those services in an energy efficient way. BP has been concerned about the impact of climate change and energy sustainability for well over a decade and we have turned to modelling to help us understand some of the choices that may be available to us. At Imperial College, we've been very fortunate to have two different advantages. One was that we have lots of relevant departments in engineering, environmental science and business that can come together. And second, the Energy Futures Lab, whose role is to coalesce research in future energy challenges. So the tool that we've created is a series of software models. Um, they comprise a way of describing cities, their space, uh, the buildings within them, the technologies within them, and then some specialized algorithms that help you to identify low carbon possibilities and energy efficient solutions. The urban energy system model is unique in that not only does it have full knowledge of the terrain, the ground, rivers and so forth, and where the houses and the streets are, but it can also inform you what might happen if people change their behavior. For example, by leaving for work 15 minutes later, how does that affect your demand for peak energy in the city? It is actually possible to run cities on maybe half the energy that they use and with at least a reduction of 50% of the greenhouse gas emissions. And that can be done with existing technologies, but by doing it in a joined up, integrated fashion. This tool could be used by a number of different people within the city. Uh, it could be used by urban planners, uh, people within the local authorities trying to understand what policy targets might be sensible. It can also be used by engineering consultants and architects who are trying to identify the technical solutions that might work best for a given project. BP values investment in modelling. It allows us to better understand what technology changes might happen and focus our investment in the right places. Over the next five years, we want to take some of the concepts to take our technology that we've developed and deploy it and actually help cities to become more sustainable. And secondly, to expand the methods so that they can be applied to other critical infrastructure in cities like water and waste. From this fascinating session, urban energy is a problem that uh, merits yeah, deep uh, uh, exploration by, uh, by academics such as uh, here at uh, Imperial. Now, I think um, they've done a great uh, job in, in highlighting uh, what sort of energy savings are, are possible and how to achieve them as well. At Foster and Partners we do a lot of master planning and we're always trying to find the most streamlined approach to ensure that we're creating energy efficient but also aesthetic cities that work for the individuals. And we're always looking at new technologies and new approaches and we were interested in this back three years ago um, when they approached us. Um, it's developed a lot since then and it's really come along. So I'm hoping to kind of start it, to use it in a couple of master plans in the near future. I think what this project has shown with BP's support has sort of flagged up for the whole world actually that this sort of community collaborative planning is now possible. The Urban Energy Systems Project was, to my thinking, one of the first to consider not just energy technologies, but energy technologies in an urban systems context. In that sense, it was and remains a pioneer in thinking about cities as systems of systems, 
something that's going to be very important as cities become even more important in society and they become more complicated, requiring a greater degree of optimization. If we're going to solve the problems of the future of cities, they're intensely interdisciplinary and require many stakeholders. They all have to come together to understand the technologies, understand the policies, the economics, the behavioral aspects that will let our cities be even better in the future. It's really satisfying to think about working in urban energy systems because what you're doing in designing an urban energy system is creating an infrastructure that will last. So you're not just benefiting yourself and the generations now, but future generations, our children and our grandchildren, will be able to use that infrastructure and build on it for better lives for themselves as well.